my name is uh, Sanjoy Ghosh. Um, I work at the biology department at UBC Okanagan. And um, I guess one of the first things that got me interested in science was just this natural curiosity I had. Um, most kids have natural curiosity and, and things, but uh, I was fortunate to have a couple of very influential people in my life uh, who never told me not to ask questions. So I guess I was always asking questions about how things work. Uh, my dad was so disturbed at some time because every time he used to get me a toy, next day he used to find the toy all broken down into wheels and you know, he gave me a car, the wheels is on one side, the windows are on the other side. I was, I guess, naturally curious. And uh, yes, I had a very supportive uh, mom and a dad who encouraged this um, thing in my life from very early beginning. So when I'm asked about uh, the importance of my research, um, I guess I have always been interested in food because okay, I like eating uh, and I love cooking. So I've been always interested about food. Now what I have seen is, as you all might know, that the incidence of chronic diseases is increasing in Canada, US, look at any country, they'll tell you that you know the number of chronic disorders is increasing. And I think food is a drug. Okay, So it is a drug that we don't think about it as a drug. We take it every day, three times a day, and it profoundly changes our body's response to stress or the external environment. And so what I specifically do is I am trying to understand how the various dietary fats that when you go and eat, you know, or the choice of our cooking oils, like whether we should eat coconut oil or olive oil or canola oil, etc., etc., in our cooking, and how do they influence the incidence of diabetes, obesity. So I have here my student, uh, Sandy, who joined my lab last year, uh, and he has been working to find out why some unsaturated fats might not be healthy. And I think it is very important to know. We still don't know what are those factors that does influence the increasing rate of chronic disease. I believe it is a faulty diet and our dietary fats that we choose it plays a big role in its uh, development. You know, for a long time we have been told across any disease uh, that saturated fat is bad, you know, butter is bad, egg is bad, etc., etc. And the main reason has been this role of cholesterol, which is present in saturated fat, which is mostly got from animals. Now, having followed that dietary guideline in the last 30 years in Canada, what we might now know in the, for the last 30 years, our saturated fat intake or our saturated fat in our diet has not increased. Literally anything you can buy in the market from burgers to potato chips to anything which is cooked in any kind of fat is not saturated fat. It is all in polyunsaturated fat or I know the liquid fat or vegetable oils. Now what recent research suggests is that our earlier declaration of saturated fat is bad and causes this cholesterol and heart disease, it not probably right because if you can imagine, if our saturated fat intake over the last 30 years did not change, and our increase, and we have an increased incidence of chronic diseases, so diseases are going up, they must not be related to each other, right? Well, that is my research. I have published quite a few papers now showing that how these unsaturated fats or vegetable oils can increase inflammation. And right now, inflammation is known to be a better predictor of any chronic disease, whether it's heart disease, obesity, diabetes, etc. So I'm very excited. Uh, this is a new 
field of area or a relatively new field of uh, research where people are trying to study how our current vegetable oils, which we took and started as a mean of healthy lifestyle, may not be as healthy as we originally deemed it to be. So one of the biggest challenges that I faced in uh, my scientific career so far is um, established bias, right, um, in the system. So that means there was a, a belief and a notion that I was fighting against. Uh, in the, my case, it would be what kind of fat is good for the body. Now, whenever you have people who are standing in front of you saying that what they think is right and what I think, or maybe if any of you become a scientist, uh, what you think is wrong, then there are two ways to deal with it. One is to say, okay, you know, give it up. You know, it's, I'm only one person against so much of the world. I'm not going to fight. The other way is to be stubborn and keep on fighting. The path is not easy, okay? Uh, you will face rejection, you will face criticism. So you have to grow really a thick skin and believe in your own abilities and keep on slogging. So that is one of the uh, advice that I would like to give to any uh, scientist or any budding scientist is Trust your gut, but also accept the facts that are out there. Try to reconcile your idea with the accepted facts and try to question those facts and also question yourself. Through consistent questioning and doing the required things, in my case it was doing the experiments or doing the studies, take a hard look at your own data at your own life and be ready to face any challenge and never stop questioning the existing paradigm.